the name of this podcast is actually everything that you need mm -hmm. the name of this is actually the secret source of all the questions that you might have i think i can is an affirmative statement that takes you into that virtuous circle where you think you can so you take action mm -hmm. then you're going to get feedback then you course correct and then you get evidence and we all just need that evidence mm -hmm. faith is belief without proof you've got to start with the faith that you can yes. before you get the proof otherwise you're never going to get that proof right but starting with that in mind and starting by saying to yourself this is going to work You'll yes. figure out the how. Everything else becomes easy. Welcome to I Think I Can podcast. My name is Luella Young. I am a woman who believes that we, like wine, get better with age. Age brings us wisdom, intuition, and a level of sophistication that is beyond the reach of youth. I am here to tell you that living a luxuriously rich and fulfilling life is in your reach. I Think I Can podcast will teach you to think differently in order to get different results. Allow me to show you how to do life effortlessly. This podcast is for the woman who is tired of playing by the rules of society, community, religion, parents, and partners. I Think I Can is all about becoming brave, authentic, purposeful, and strong. Listen weekly and you will find yourself living a life you could have only once dreamed of. Thoughts drive our physiology, so channel your thoughts with me into a life truly worth living. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to I Think I Can podcast. Now, if you are someone who has always thought of entrepreneurship, or maybe you have a little business going right now, but you, you know you need some help to take it to that next level, maybe you're you know, maybe you got some blocks in the way, or you're fearing exposure, or whatever that might be. Well, listen on because today I have business psychologist, Libby. And is it Kim Karen? Let me. Kim Karen, um, that's a very good attempt. That's better perfect. than most the receptionists make out. <laughs> perfect. And, you know, listen to that accent. She is straight from the UK. I just love it. Um, yes, Libby Kim Karen. And she is also, she's been a TEDx speaker and circle host, Libby is a peak performance neuro coach. I love that. An accredited flow consultant for senior leadership and entrepreneurs. I'm going to have to ask you later on for you to define what a flow consultant is. I'm not quite sure. sure. So, okay. She trains multi million dollar companies in leadership, management, communications, and mindset for success and blends together bulletproof strategy with behavioral psychology and neuroassociative conditioning. Libby was the winner, my goodness, the winner of Entrepreneur of the Year 2021 in the Global Women Awards. Congrats on that, Libby. That's Thank amazing. <laughs> so welcome. How are you? Thank you for having me, Luella. Lovely to be here. <laughs> okay. So let's first, let's, let's tell us, uh, the listeners, what is a flow consultant? What is that? Well, a flow consultant is about this principle that they discovered years ago, but we got really excited about it 15 years ago when suddenly athletes started using it. The thing with athletes, you've got quantifiable results, right? Mm -hmm. And when you can see the high jump, high jump bar like raises higher when someone's in flow, suddenly people got really like, oh, hang on, <laughs> this is a thing. Right. And, so we, and then we also invented functional MRI technology where you can see the blood flow changing in people's brains as they think different thoughts. Mm -hmm. So the, the synergy between mind, body, soul is something I'm really passionate about. And I've always been fascinated by why do people do what they do? And flow is like the ultimate representation of that. Because when you're in flow, everything just feels easy. So even when you're working, it's effortless effort. Mm -hmm. It's the stuff that you do naturally that you wouldn't want to delegate 
to somebody else. But flow is different for everybody according to which of the four main brain types you are. So depending on what neurology you're running and, and your thinking style, there's different things that are in flow for different people. So I've developed my own profiling tool to, to help identify this and, and entrepreneurs around the world are now using it. And it's a really fascinating, fascinating thing to me. But we talk as if the rest of the world hears like we do and they don't. Yeah. And we behave as if the rest of the world thinks like us and they don't. <laughs> you know, at most yes. you're connecting with 25% of your audience most of the time. And so mm. this is like mind blowing for entrepreneurs to understand. And so everyone that comes on one of my courses does one of these profiles and the results are huge. The results are just huge. So for example, if I would take your course, um, yes. I, I would discover that, okay, I would discover, I, I would, I would get aware of how my thought patterns are and then try to match my audience to that? that you would get aware of where your brain goes naturally. So flow is best described. It's, it's like water. Mm -hmm. it, it, just, it just moves. It just goes with a path of least resistance. And your brain will have a certain style mm -hmm. that it knows how to do mm -hmm. because we're all, yes, there's some conditioning, but we're all born pretty much at a certain type of neurological patterning. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is we tend to gravitate towards things that suit us, but sometimes we get it wildly wrong. Mm -hmm. So I was out of flow for years before I figured this stuff out. I worked in the city, I had uh, the job, I had the salary, I had two houses, I had the posh car, wildly unhappy, but mm -hmm. from the outside, a success story. Yeah. And from the outside, looking glossy, looking perfect, I was miserable. And I burnt out three times before I figured out what the hell was going on. Mm. And it and it was a eye opening revelation to me to understand that when you're out of flow, yes, you can do it. But should you? Because it exhausts you. Mm. <laughs> and so that's that's the, the key piece that mm. people that come on my course understand is what is my zone of genius? What mm. is my brain? style so we talk about the four big cats so we've got the cheetah brain the lion the leopard and the tiger mm. and depending on which one you are you behave in a completely different way mm -hmm. so cheetahs for example they are 70 miles an hour or stop you know they're yes. run 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 yes. or they're flat out and they right. have three brilliant ideas in the shower every morning but follow through <laughs> precisely none of them because they get distracted <laughs> so a lot of entrepreneurs okay. <laughs> i know right a lot of entrepreneurs are this cheetah brain where they're like go 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 yeah. go wait wait nothing <laughs> else. run over there i'm just gonna yeah. follow that and so we get to this yeah. real like excitement until things become admin heavy so cheetahs are great at the start of a project yeah. as soon as the admin kicks in Guess what they do? Oh, uh, I'll buy another course. <laughs> oh, God. And they yeah. become course addicts, right? And they, they, they hop from place to place. So the lion's a bit different from that. The lion is all about the pride. Hunt together, live together, sleep together, mm. eat together. So the lion is people-centric. So mm. the lion doesn't care whose idea it is, whereas the cheetah has big significance to their own ideas. The lion's like, whatever, I'm just here for the team. It's all about mm. us. Mm. And they put people over process which is the opposite from the tiger. The tiger brain is process over people. The tiger is that rigid control, slightly colder. So they call the, the lion brain the soft stuff. They call that the fluffy stuff mm -hmm. because they value process more than they value people. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the leopard who sits in her tree watching and she's looking for which gazelle to go after because she never quite trusts herself. So she's oh, always got a sense of slight hesitation and, and has to feel it in her body, has to have a full body yes before anything happens because mm. she's very kinesthetic. Mm -hmm. And so we've got these four glorious big cats and they, they all deal with the world in different ways. Mm. And if you're more leopard than cheetah, for example, you'll find it very difficult to brainstorm your big ideas, but you'll be brilliant at running a franchise or, or picking up a business idea that somebody else has created, mm -hmm. you will then have all that admin nailed because you're all about process and systems. Mm -hmm. So the leopard's really effective as an entrepreneur in a different way to the cheetah who will come up with all the brilliant ideas in the world but needs a team to carry them out. Mm -hmm. So I work with a lot of cheetahs that have just got blocked because they get frustrated before the point where they can afford a team. Mm -hmm. And I help them up ramp really fast to get to those mm -hmm. earnings, get to that magic 10K a month so that they can then afford the team that then catapults them to the 100k months mm. so you know the, the the understanding your your neurological profile is actually quite pivotal to how you scale how you grow mm. 
Yeah. Equally, the lions are so terrified of rejection. Lions are all about connectivity. So mm -hmm. as soon as they fear rejection, they take their foot off the gas. So hence okay. for them, launch mode is a terrifying place because right. they need the yeses. They need the love. Please love me. Please love me. Mm -hmm. Whereas the tiger brain just doesn't care about that. So they will do launch after launch after launch like a machine. Yeah. yeah. Because it's a process and it's a tech thing. Yeah. 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 So where, where do the tigers get held back then? Tigers get held up because they are very, very, very risk averse. They mm. are all about security so they're all about detail data analysis when i have a tiger on a discovery call with me i will immediately open up on my screen my testimonials page so they can see mm. evidence in front of them mm. because what they want is to know that i'm not a snake oil salesman to know that i get results because they they can't connect with me until they've ticked that box so i don't okay. bother talking to them until i've shown them my credentials shown mm. them what i've done Showing yes. them the awards and then they relax and then they can. And this is why it's so useful to know this stuff when you are an entrepreneur, right? Because yes. if you know what stops people from buying as well, you yes. can make them feel better. Yeah. And you can make that connection happen depending on what brain type they are in, in that specific way. Right. Okay. Okay. So I'm just thinking here. Um, how about, okay, so if I'm an entrepreneur and then I do my profile type and I, and I find out it kind of sounds like I'm a cheater right now, but if, yeah. um, without doing it, but if then how does that connect to my, um, potential clients or customers? So you will have a style of connectivity based on your neurology. Yes. We can all fake it. We can all do the other bits of the grid. The mm. trouble is it's draining. Mm -hmm. to be out of flow so for example tigers and cheetahs they can be speakers on a stage uh, as i am so i'm a mix of the cheetah and the lion as i'm sure you can probably guess and i can talk all day for a job and then go home and talk at my partner about it right. some more and then get on the phone and talk to my friends because yeah. you know talking is what i do it's just what i do yeah and so that's completely in flow state for me. Whereas a tiger and a cheetah, they can do the same task as me. They could do a presentation. They could talk on a podcast. Then they need to go and lie down in a darkened room and recharge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I get the feeling you might have a little component of tiger. Yeah, yeah, I definitely like I, yeah, I, I love my independent, like me time. Definitely yes. need to recharge. Yeah. That, yeah. that whole like close the doors. Yes. Don't talk to me. Like, yes. Just leave me for a bit. I'll be fine, yeah. but just leave, you know. Yeah 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 for and that, sure. and we see this a lot in entrepreneurs because the 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 thing that makes an entrepreneur successful is the ability to blend round the grid all the different all the different bits but the process side is something that is so vital for entrepreneurs to have and the tiger epitomizes that that locking things down it's the winter of the business cycle so whereas okay. cheetah spring lion summer autumn is the leopard the tiger is the winter so it looks mm -hmm. cold and barren it looks shut off but actually mm -hmm. what you're doing is cultivating the next year's crop mm -hmm. so if you don't go and recharge if you don't shut those doors if you don't close off yeah you don't get that creative rebound right so when tigers burn out they burn out really hard because mm -hmm. they are they've pushed themselves to the nth degree because they keep trying to be what they see other people doing Okay. So that go live every day, you know, exactly. we see it on the internet all the time, don't we? Yeah. But if you try and mimic someone else's style and it's not your neurology, that is a hard path to nothing. Okay. This is interesting. Okay. So on a personal note, then, I mean, you and I have a mentor that we, that we yes. work with. Right. And, um, you know, when we, I don't know, were you on the course for social media impact Academy? Impact, yes, yes. Okay, okay. So um, I'm still struggling with that a little bit. I'll be like total, you know, disclosure. Yes. Um, I don't, I, like just this morning, I'm just thinking, I'm still not sure about this. Like I've, yes. I've, I've, the whole Instagram, I've been, you know, people probably that have known me two or three years ago know that I was, I opened up an Instagram account basically in November of this year. Oh, this is you so know. funny. You yeah. see, this is really interesting because I struggle with Instagram a lot. Okay. I struggle with it a lot because it's all about significance and I'm all about connection. Mm. And so for mm. me, that show and tell game isn't one that matches my value set. Exactly. I don't like yeah. the, oh, look at my house, look at my car. Yes. And I really can't ever. And this is one of the 
pieces that I do in the Turn Your Brain um, Business Edition course is we dig deep into values because your values mm-hmm. actually control your behaviours and your beliefs control your behaviours. So if you don't if you don't hold the same values as someone that is doing the show and tell, you can't fake that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It just feels incredibly uncomfortable, doesn't it? It 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 does. It's sort of like okay, so I went live for about you know seven days in a row, just like a little right. live and just kind of promoting a masterclass that I just had held. Well, actually, still held holding. It's it's today's last day, but like you know, leading up to it, I was like. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going live. Okay. I, I yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. And it's like, honestly, it's like you push that button and you're just like, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, trying yeah. to stop, trying to feel relaxed and it's like, Oh God. Yeah. So, but you know, um, I, like, I don't, I, I see the value. Uh, I, I know it's sort of like, um, you know, like a business card, right? I mean, they, they, they really get a sense of who you are if they, if they visit your Instagram page, but, but I, uh, I'm definitely a lion, like in, in that respect, like I love, I love my website. I personally use websites. Like I, you know, if I'm finding a professional, if I want to find a professional, whether it's a, it's a dog Absolutely. walker or like yeah. a high end mentor, yeah. I'm Googling. Yeah. And I find their website and I love looking through their websites yeah. and I feel I mainly attract the same people yes. that, that value that for me, you know. Yeah, and people will resonate with you based on you being in congruence. So, we call, you know, the congruence game is a, is a really interesting one because everything has a vibration, everything has a frequency. When we are incoherent, when we are out of congruence when there's a slight even a one degree shift away from true north Mm -hmm. people can feel that like we know Mm. dogs can read the room right yeah we know how just instantly unbelievable a raised eyebrow 50 paces you know they they feel oh and we forget we're human animals we're still animals and we can also read people Mm -hmm. and we can sense when somebody is just going through the motions and they're not heart and soul in Absolutely. And actually, funnily enough, my next course is about this. It's called Trinity and it is the mind, body, soul connection because mm. it's all about getting yourself into alignment with you, not mm. to your mentor, not to the people mm-hmm. you see. Coming back to base camp, coming back to this core strength that we all have, but we forget and we tell ourselves, I should be more this, I should be more that, mm-hmm. I should be more over there, I should be doing. And we mm-hmm. ultimately we're a human being, not a human doing. And we no. forget that yes. relentlessly. Yes. And it's coming back to the being. Who am I? What, you know, what do I care about? What am I, what am I not prepared to settle for anymore? What am I going to be passionate about for the rest of my life? And, you know, yes. it gives me goosebumps to think of how my yes. life has turned around since I stopped trying to follow what I was told was success. You know, okay, well, we were, Libby, tell we were us told about things, that. We? I, I, oh, 100%. And, I, and I'm still being told things, right? I, I Like I still, you know, I'm in a... <laughs> And I'm still trying to figure it out. So um, tell us, tell us a little bit about your, like your journey. I'm I'm interested. I mean, you, you also, you're a neuropsychologist, like, even though, I mean, I studied neurology and I studied psychology, like tell our listeners how, what is that? Sure. So my path has been a a bit of a a zigzag career (laughs) because (laughs) I did, I did start off in the city And the reason I started off in the city was quite simply, I blame Jackie Collins and Shirley Conran for this entirely because we were told over and over again, like all the films, I don't know if you saw Working Girl, all the films were about females bossing it in the city. And how did they boss it? They pretended to be men. They basically put on the sharp tailoring and they stomped around and I wore horn rimmed glasses and I had my hair scragged back in a bun wearing sharp trouser suits and... (laughs) It worked. I got to be like director level by age 26, which is good, right? Yeah. And I sort of went up the ranks very fast. Why? Because I modelled success. I looked at what people were doing. Yes. And I was like, hang on. How have they got? Okay, let me copy what they're literally copycatting. Yes. And my whole identity was based on trying to be what I saw around me. Mm-hmm. And that's why I burnt out because I was relentlessly coming away from true north mm. I was relentlessly trying to be everything that I saw and a lot of those let's be honest were men so mm. in the city at that time we're talking 20 years ago now getting a bit old um there was <laughs> <I know>. approximately <laughs> it's really bad isn't it when you count like this on your fingers and you're like hang on um I think it was about 80 20 
uh, male dominated environments and I was in the finance and banking markets. And so I saw all these versions of success. I thought that was what success was. I thought when I get the big house, I'll be happy. Mm. When I get the shiny car, I'll be happy. And guess mm. what? Every time I got there and I wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I'd raise the bar. I'd just change yeah. the goalposts yes. relentlessly, like over and over again. And so, oh, when I get a director badge, then I'll be happy. Mm. You know? And mm. there was always this striving and this sense mm-hmm. of lack. And we know what the universe does with that, right? yeah it just doesn't resonate and so and especially when you're incoherent when you're incongruent your your body and mind start to fight themselves yeah and so guess what i ended up in hospital with pneumonia with a collapsed lung because i pushed it too far you know i i kept going past the point where i should have stopped (laughs) didn't listen to the signals didn't pay attention to the to the massive red flags i was getting yeah so burnt out massively and so i then went and decided to uh change my life and found Tony Robbins, my very first mentor. Oh. And I went to Hawaii and did life mastery with him there. And that was the week the planes flew into the Twin Towers. Oh. And I was in a room with 2,000 Americans. And they were all, you know, intimately connected to this horrific disaster that had just happened. There was a girl on my team. And I remember it to this day. She handed me her phone and said I don't understand this message as we were walking in in the morning and I'd seen the news reports she hadn't she hadn't watched the tv and I didn't know that and she handed me her phone and it was this voice saying honey I love you but the room's filling up with smoke but I love you but I don't think I'm going to get out and it still chills me to this day Mm. and it was her fiance and it was one of those life-changing moments Luella where you you know and I I sort of supported her and 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 Mm just was there with her while the staff handed her the briefing document that told people that hadn't seen the news that morning because we all used to go in at like 7 a.m so some people did just get up go for a run whatever and so they were handing out this briefing documents and i watched her and she fell apart and and it was a life-changing moment for me because i suddenly realized how connected i am with people and how much people matter to me Mm. and all I, i couldn't do much i couldn't do anything really all i could do was hold hold Mm -hmm. so I did that but it changed my life in overnight overnight and I was just like right okay I need to change what I'm doing change okay okay so um meaning that none of all these things that you're chasing matters is that what you're saying like all all these goals like what changed no no the the goals we only want the goals we have because of how we think we'll feel when we get there Mm-hmm. it's not the goal itself it's never the goal it's not it's never about the money it's no. never about the 10k months like so many people contact me going i want to get to 10k months and my first mm. response is always why what yeah. do you think you're going to get when you get there mm. what do you think will change mm-hmm. for you when you get there and that that's what mm-hmm. we're going to work on together mm-hmm. because that mm-hmm. 10k month is a, it's a marker it's a line in the sand that people have told themselves they need to get to other those otherwise they won't be enough they won't be worthy mm-hmm. when i get there then i'll be worthy is yeah. the game we play yeah yeah okay okay so so that was um a pivoting moment for you and then so you get back to where are you in the uk by the way are i'm you... near cambridge but that's only because of of what happened next to my very weird story because <laughs> I, I came back shut down the business um that i'd been running Hmm. and um decided that what i wanted to do and again i was still playing this game of when i get here it will mean that what i really want to do now is go and get a degree in neurology and be a vet <laughs> and so in my logical brain i <laughs> i decided that i would feel again it's the feeling yes i would feel uh intelligent successful uh i'd have a status i'd have a profession mm-hmm. i'd make my life mean something because what i saw with 9 11 was the ending of those lives so suddenly and it just told me life is short i've got to do something that matters that counts mm-hmm. what do i want to do i want to be a professional mm-hmm. so i came back i had precisely zero of the qualifications required to get into vet school so i had to sit what we do over here which is a levels um for two years before i could get a place in vet school but i did wow and i got into cambridge university so um that's yeah a big a big institution and um i was gobsmacked when that happened the reason i did it was because 
once I discovered this amazing power of the brain and body and soul connection, mm -hmm. I studied how to study. I learned how to learn. Yeah. That is the only thing that got me into that institution. Yes. Because yes. <laughs> I was not naturally gifted. I'm not naturally academic. Yes. I just made it my job to, this was a must. And when things are a must, when they change from being a should to a must, you find the way or you make the way. Oh, exactly. You yeah. move everything out yeah. of your path. And so I just made it a must. I'm going to be a vet now. That's it. 9-11 has happened. It's shown me that life is short. What am I going to do? This is what I'm going to do. Done. Yes. <laughs> and because yes. I believed it myself, yeah. the piece is moved and it, ha and it happened. Yeah. So you embodied it and you just, there's no looking totally back. stepped into it. Yeah. yeah. And I remember the moment because it was so, it was so funny. There was this actual moment and it was whilst I was sitting in a photo booth about to have my picture taken to put on my application for Cambridge mm. and I was so scared and I was so you know the, the trepidation of, of a massive university like that with a world-renowned reputation mm -hmm. and I'm like who am I to apply there mm. who am I but by then I'd done two years of solid mindset work and so I told myself look if any of this is true all of it is true mm -hmm. if any of this works then all of it works yes so therefore yes. You are going to Cambridge. And at that moment, my face lit up, the flash went off, and I've got that captured in that oh. picture that's on my Cambridge University student card. Well, still to this day. Yeah. It's like, it's like literally the light bulb moment. Literally. <laughs> it went off, and I just went, <gasps> and I took this big breath in, and so the camera's catching me going, <laughs> they must have thought I was some sort of Wally when they got the picture. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so then, okay, but this is interesting because now you're like, oh my gosh, like that would be my dream, first of all, to go to Cambridge. I mean, I just, uh, you know, being a Canadian, I'm, I'm all into the, the Commonwealth and, and, and yes. all of that. Um, but so then, yeah, like you're a vet, but now you're a business <laughs> coach. Yeah. Because I, so, I did the I did the things I I jumped through all the hoops I got my first degree which was the neurology degree, and then I got the second degree which was the veterinary degree and I also popped out a baby while I was there because I thought that was sensible and so <laughs> and so I got through my dissertations with a crying teething four month old which is yes. a challenge, um but yeah I, I graduated and I loved it. How old were you? Can I ask? I was thirty six when I graduated okay and wow. then I was loving my life yeah. Yeah. I had a second baby I worked as a vet for five years and then I was sat at a red light someone drove up behind me they were looking at their phone not the red light and they crashed into the back of my car oh. so I had the universe give me a very strong redirect in that it crushed the um, vertebrae in my neck c2 to c6 so I can't do surgery anymore I can't hold a scalpel oh. with any safety with my right hand so and if you can't do surgery as a vet you've got limited use mm -hmm. and so I did try being a vet with consult only for a while uh, didn't work wasn't mm -hmm. happy mm -hmm. couldn't do the yeah. full job and I just always felt the lack always felt the the pain and I was still in pain and chronic pain that hasn't gone to this day 10 years oh. later but unfortunately I I had to think again yeah. so I reinvented yeah. Yeah, and I took my city experience with my consultancy knowledge and my my skills at training and coaching, which is what I'd ended up doing by the time I was director there, and I took my vetty knowledge yeah. of vets in practice and I started coaching vets. That was how I started. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and then oh. gradually, as I've got more of a reputation and as I've begun to win awards and and be seen on lovely podcasts like this, yeah. um more and more people outside the vet world have found me and the stuff I do works for anybody, right? You know, everyone's yeah. got a brain. And yeah. so <laughs> Tame yeah. Your Brain is now a, a bit of a global, a global product. So I've got clients all over the world and I work with a lot of coaches. I work with a lot of people that run online businesses yes. um, because this, this world that we're in has changed so dramatically, right? Over the last oh, two years. Exactly. Almost unrecognizable. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so, it's so neat because like, I love the, the team, your brain, how you, how you merged the vet, like the animals with your yeah, the, with yes. the neurology. It's so Because everything's brilliant. about cats, right? It's always exactly. about cats. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. fantastic. Okay. So, so, okay. So now you've done this since like, how long would you say you've been 
like when, when so, did you start coaching uh, vets? Yeah, so the the car crash was actually twenty uh, fifteen, and it took me a year. <laughs> I was a bit mm. slow, Luella. It took me that's, a year. That's not to slow. Read the message from the universe. <laughs> okay stop now because I I was still trying I'd go into of work as a vet and it's very physical because you've got you know little oh. Mrs Miggins comes in with a 30 kilogram Labrador you're not going to ask her to pick it up are you yeah. so I would keep trying and keep trying to help my clients and and so I tried for a year but you know one day vetting would leave me on my back for three and it wasn't sustainable mm. and by then I'd had my third baby as well mm. so I had these three busy girls to to support mm -hmm. and so I had to make the really difficult decision and so I just put down my scalpel in 2016 and started coaching, started, I, I went to work with um, a consultancy to start with and then ended up setting mm. up on my own. And then I went completely digital, thank goodness, Yes. in yes. November of 2019, just as the pandemic hit. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Before yeah. then I was going around the country, like training into practices and, you oh, know, wow. but 2019, I just, I said, right, I can see the way the market's going. I can see that coaching can mm. be done remotely. And thank goodness, because mm -hmm. I already had everything in place. Mm. By the time January, coronavirus became a thing. Yes. Um, and I managed to very cleverly get coronavirus in the January, so got it out of the way very fast. Yeah. And then I was off, off, off and running. running. Yeah. Did, so did, I've did... been doing it in this format since effectively January 2020. Okay, can I ask, you said supporting three girls yes. you have three girls i've got um, three beautiful feisty girls who are semi-ferals i call them my semi-feral domestic long hairs and oh. um, they, they are my sole responsibility so i have to be a success at what i do i yeah. it's a must right it's a must it's a decision it's a must. and when something is a must you find the way or you make the way that's yes. that's what's happening i'm coming through <laughs> when, when did that happen in so, your that was just after I had my third baby. Oh my goodness. And yeah, so she was brand new, brand new little baby. And it was a 20 year marriage that very suddenly combusted. And I made the very difficult decision and, and very painful decision to draw a line there as well and say, mm -hmm. enough, enough, enough now. Yep. And I got us out mm -hmm. and uh, became very fiercely independent. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, then got hit by the car mm. so i was then dealing with the i was dealing with all of that emotional fallout and all of that huge again the the universe asks you to reinvent every so often doesn't it yes <laughs> and i was reinventing from the the normal quote unquote mother at the school gates with 2.4 kids and suddenly there i was pretty much disabled single mother in a i know and we live in a very vanilla village like there were mm. zero divorced parents here mm. zero and suddenly you go from being an example that people look up to and say, wow, to being someone that they look at and say, oh, God, have you heard what's happened to Libby? Mm. And that shift I found incredibly challenging, um, oh, incredibly I... challenging. Like that loss of identity of being someone that people looked up to, to being someone that you get gossiped about at the school right. gate. Right. And there yeah. was... <laughs> I'll tell you this because it's so funny. There was uh, a time, it was four years where I didn't get invited to a single dinner party or social event. Oh. Whereas I had been invited to at least one event every week before that as a couple, you know, that's how, that's yes. how this works, right? Yes. And suddenly oh. as a single woman, Gosh. it's a very different social dynamic. And so I was almost completely isolated. And, and it was at that time that I realized this amazing power of the sisterhood because mm. I had two other women who were going through divorces and I just happened I walked in I was holding my my brand new baby and mm. I walked in to help blow up balloons for this PTA fate <laughs> and I heard them discussing their splits but they were doing it in such a powerful mm. resonant and aligned way they were warriors you know they were absolute mm. warriors but they were doing it so elegantly and I just listened I wasn't brave enough to talk to them but I listened from across the room mm -hmm. and I just thought I need some of that I, mm. I need to know how they're doing this because mm. that's not what I'm feeling right now. Mm. And so I got home and I very timidly like wrote this email, yes. like, please, can I be your friend effectively? Yes. Oh. And I emailed these two goddesses and God love them. They took me under their wings and they that, that sisterhood is still alive and kicking today. And actually one of them now I've helped build a business, funnily enough, Flaming Groovy Candles. Go and look at Flaming Groovy Candles. Everyone. Okay. Um, <laughs> but she's doing amazingly. Um, my other friend of that of that cohort is nurse of the year uh global nurse of the year 
and you know the, the sisterhood mm. is still really strong but it strong. taught me so much because it was all about this amazing ability as women we have to lift each other as we rise Absolutely. and to hold each other when we're not rising you know yeah and yeah. that just it changed my entire outlook and I started becoming very female centric then I still coach blokes but I'm I'm primarily you know deep into the feminine energy game these days mm, okay wonderful like thank you for sharing that because um you know, I, I, I picked up on that obviously because of the work I do. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, you faced your fear there, right? I mean, there was so much fear behind making that decision. And then, I mean, I hear this over and over again that, you know, women do it. They, 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 they make that decision and then seem to be hit like you were literally hit, but often there's something that comes right after that, that's not favorable. And, but you mm. know, you, you push through that and then you realize I can do anything. I can literally do anything. I think yeah. it's really interesting, isn't it? But I, I think the universe does throw things under your feet to see how you react. Mm -hmm. I really do feel that. Mm -hmm. And I think when you can hold yourself firm and when you can hold yourself strong and when you can say, I'm doing this anyway, mm. you know, bring it on keep coming mm -hmm. at me I'm gonna do this anyway and then things begin to move out of your way and then mm -hmm. events line up and then you start to move back into flow mm -hmm. and sudden it's almost like someone's listening and they get the message oh watch out she's coming through <laughs> and then, right and suddenly you find the universe goes the other way mm -hmm. but, but there's a tipping point you have to keep you have to keep firm to that to that point where it does then flip the other way yes I, yes. I feel I might that's my personal belief system but that's you know I I think some of that is due to the way our mighty brain works, you know, the, the power of thought, which is why I love your title. I think I can. <laughs> um, but that power of thought is so strong mm -hmm. that literally it changes your physicality. Yeah. And like a mother will lift a, a car to free her trapped child. It's, She's not physically capable of doing that, but she will. Exactly. Yeah. This, and that fascinates me. Yes. Yes. And to, and to know that, you know, you have to think of you when you're going through these things, you know, rather than getting caught up in how will this affect the children, right? I mean, it's sort of like, yeah, I know they're going to be, you know, things are going to be a little bit difficult for a while, but like having a strong mom as a model, I think, you know, it's, 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 it's what they need. Um, yeah yeah and but i think as well is for me i came from a parenting dynamic where there was overt abuse and i remember watching as a little girl and going why is this being allowed to you know they read mm -hmm. like we're talking about dogs children read a raised mm -hmm. eyebrow from 50 paces don't they mm -hmm. you are giving them a message if you stay in a situation that is not healthful yeah what are they going to interpret from that what are they going to mm -hmm. read is their sense of self-worth mm -hmm. what are they going to see you modeling mm -hmm. that they then copy themselves and so my mm -hmm. brand with them has always been if somebody hurts you you take yourself away you take yourself mm -hmm. out of that situation you mm -hmm. do not stay to be hurt again mm -hmm. and you do not stay to let something abusive continue you go you just yes. go yes yes that's it Wonderful. Okay. So I guess give us, how are we, we, we got about maybe, yeah, 10 minutes or so. Yeah. Why don't you give us an example of just one of the women that you've worked with, you know, whether it's, it's someone starting a small little side business, like maybe a candle company or, yeah. or, yeah. Or, or, um, you know, yeah, high executive, you know, that yeah. just took it to a different I do, level. I do both. I've, I've got some lovely clients at the start out end and I've got some lovely clients at the scale and grow end. And what's fantastic is that it doesn't matter where they are in their journey. The same things come up, the same, mm. I call it the four pillars, the, the, the same blocks are in people's way. And usually it's self-doubt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lack of self-knowledge of your zone of genius, which is why everyone does a profile and starts there with me. Mm -hmm. And it's this feeling of uh, trying to focus on the how. They get so caught up in the how, they forget their why. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, come back to your why. Why are you doing this? Yeah. What is it you think you're going to get at the end? Mm -hmm. So I use an escape to arrival model in, in Tame Your Brain, which is where we, we look at what feelings are you feeling now that you don't want to feel anymore? Mm -hmm. What situation are you in now that you want to escape from? Mm -hmm. And then where do you want to go? What do you want to have that you haven't got yet? Mm -hmm. What do you think that's going to change for you? Yes. <laughs> what do you think that's going to make you feel? And then we close the gap. Mm -hmm. because the gap between the two is very simply the difference between knowing what to do and doing what you know everyone knows what to do Luella this is the exactly. funny thing exactly everyone knows they're just blocked they're just in their own way yeah and so, so it's getting them to free up and get out of their own way is is the biggest challenge for me see that again it's the difference of knowing what to do or they're struggling with knowing what to do and... everyone knows what to do there's yeah. a gap between knowing what to do and doing what you know. Yeah, doing what you know. The action part is what's missing. People mm -hmm. get stuck in overthinking. Mm -hmm. We call it analysis paralysis, where they mm -hmm. go into this, it must be perfect. Mm -hmm. I can't do it yet because, and they tell themselves a lot of reasons why they can't. And my job is to get them from version none to version one, because mm. that's one step nearer to version mm -hmm. done, right? They're not mm -hmm. there yet, but you've done something. You've acted, <laughs> you've therefore moved. You've yeah. taken off, the plane is now in the air. Yes. Now we can course correct. Yes. So yeah. there's four steps to my Tame Your Brain. And okay. one of the biggest one of those is that course correction. But you can only mm -hmm. do that when you know where you're going. Mm -hmm. And and that's why, you know, when a plane takes off, it's of course 98% of the time that it's in the air, right? Mm -hmm. But the pilot course corrects and the autopilot mm -hmm. course corrects mm -hmm. because it knows where it's going. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the, the secret source pieces, which when I figured that out, I was like, oh, now I get it. You just yeah. have to start. Yeah. You just have to start. And then you just have to keep going and make it a must. And then the other bits line up. Yes. And the how figures itself out as you go. You don't know everything mm -hmm. when you start. No. But you have to start. Otherwise, you're still stuck there. Yeah. Looking at all these other people killing it. And you're like, ah, I wish. Yeah. 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 And doing the comparisons and the justification oh, why that's not me. And this is why I can't do it. But they have that. Exactly and, right. you yeah. know, yeah. Exactly right. And that whole comparisonitis game is deadly oh. because there will always be someone further along the path than you. Yes. And there will always be someone that you can measure yourself up against and go, God, I'm such a tiny, tiny prawn in this game. Mm -hmm. And look at that giant lobster. But the thing is, it's once you start and when you have this self-belief and when you have this point in the map that you want to get to, it is literally just a matter of time because you will get there mm -hmm. if you're determined to do so. And, and the only difference is the time. So but what what do you think is the the largest contributing factor when it comes to time i'm not sure if you can what 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 propels people like quickly versus someone who takes years like i don't know if that's something yeah. you can answer but it is absolutely brilliant question because sometimes you see it don't you where somebody's got all the right pieces mm. but it's not working or it's not mm. flowing and it, it does come back to flow it does come back to when you're in flow 80 percent of the time mm -hmm. there's a bit of polishing you can do but mostly you're doing the right thing for you when mm -hmm. you're not in flow 80 percent of the time you start to self-sabotage because actually what's happening mm -hmm. is pain mm -hmm. there's no such thing as procrastination is, is the exciting news congratulations everybody you're not lazy or stupid mm -hmm. or incapable you're mm -hmm. just running some pain avoidance Technique. okay okay because when we mm. procrastinate or delay or block it's because the thing that we're fearing mm -hmm. is actually it's more painful to do it mm -hmm. than it is to not do it so we sit mm -hmm. and we watch and we we panic about oh i still haven't done it it must make me a terrible person but all it is is just you're avoiding pain you're in it away from behaviors rather than towards behaviors right. so in answer to your question the thing that speeds up progress is a combination of two things it's being in flow yeah and it's blending mindset then strategy then mindset then strategy because mindset wears off mm -hmm. it's like having a shower you don't just mm -hmm. do it once <laughs> mm -hmm. mindset is a, a continual game mm -hmm. of improvement mm -hmm. and mindset is always going to be something that you need to top up because daily life just depletes you doesn't it mm -hmm. oh, just yeah living depletes yeah. you at the moment yeah. And with the, the state of the world and things going on, it's very easy to start getting knocked off your perch. Mm -hmm. So you have to be constantly vigilant because mm -hmm. your thoughts 
are what actually control your actions and your actions are what get you to your results. Mm -hmm. But your thoughts come with a whole bag of biochemistry. We forget we're a seething bag of biochemistry. Mm -hmm. And with that biochemistry is the ability for you to completely derail yourself if you're thinking mm -hmm. the wrong thoughts. Mm -hmm. Because it only takes 20 seconds of negative emotion to create an acid wash in your body. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which, you know, relates even to our health, right? It's just like, it's, it's direct inflammation. Absolutely. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So yeah, mindset strategy, mindset strategy, and just constant belief in yourself. Yes. Um, continually thinking about the why, not not so much the it's, how. The how is easy when you think of it. It's sort of like it's mechanics. Yeah, it, it, yeah. You, you Google it. You, you go to YouTube. You Google it. You Someone's find, always got an answer. Yeah. To the yeah. how, nobody else can answer your why. No, no. Very true. The, the why comes from you living on purpose and the why comes from what you're being, not what you're doing. <laughs> and yes. the how is just the doing. The why is the being. And that, you know, is, is that central alignment, that alignment with self, that alignment of mind, body, soul, that beautiful trinity. When that works, everything mm, works. Everything works. Okay. So what is, um, I know you, you have a little, um, you're going to drop off, uh, off a little, a a link for us to um, to take advantage of in, in terms of your program, but what or your programs? It sounds like yes. what are you um, looking the most forward to um, in or you know what's on your horizon? What what what's what's your? Well, I've got a, an amazing clash of dates. Where <laughs> I've been nominated for. Um, another entrepreneur award, which is very oh. flattering. The um, Digital Women have nominated oh. me for Entrepreneur of the Year, and the award ceremony for that I was really looking forward to, just to put on a posh frock and drink champagne for a bit. <laughs> but it's clashing with a retreat that I've already got booked in Bali. So this is a lovely problem to have. Oh, so this wow! Is, <laughs> this is a good. Jeez. This is a great date clash, but I'm really cross, and I'm like, ah. Oh. It had to be that weekend. <laughs> no kidding. Oh my God. Is this a retreat you're holding or you're, it's, you're... yeah. So it's, um, it's called uh, the masters and, uh, this is a beautiful place in Bali called mm -hmm. vision villas where they've got the four energies, which mm -hmm. my big cat brain profile is based on. So it's got the energy of fire, earth, steel, and wood, which are mm -hmm. the four main brain types of, of mm -hmm. the business cycle. And I'm not kidding. When you go and sit, in the barley's around these energies you feel completely different the air is like vibrating and it's just wow. it's inspirational it's absolutely inspirational and so yeah it's a small group um program and it's a week long but that's in october starting mm. on the 14th i think it is and that is exactly when the award ceremony is very cross wow. Wow. <laughs> well just the fact that you you've been nominated for it i mean just Oh, oh absolutely. I'm in such esteemed company where I'm humbled by the people that I'm up with for the award. I don't for a minute ex expect to, to get it. I'm just thrilled to be put at the table with these amazing women that are rocking it, you know, around the planet. And it's just such a great age to be alive where we can connect. And this yeah. is, I genuinely feel this is the first revolution that has actually been suited to females ever. It's yes. the first time that there's something that serves us rather than diminishes mm. us it takes mm -hmm. away from us we've got this amazing power like you and I connecting now look at this I know I know and I'm sat here next to Cambridge and you're out there oh. and, and here we are like in the same yeah. room it's amazing it's so neat I know I know I was just very thrilled that you know you're you're able to come on to my podcast and because yeah definitely I could feel your energy across the ocean and you know, I knew your message would be helping so many women that, uh, that listen to this podcast. So, so tell us about, um, the link that you can share with us and yes. yeah. So I'm always really happy. I'm, I'm, I love podcasts so much because I need to talk all the day. And so <laughs> I always offer, uh, for people that are listening, that are intrigued by this, that want to know more, that want to take this one layer deeper mm -hmm. start with a profile like just start with a profile mm, okay. they are included in all of my courses okay. um but if you just want to do the profile they're normally i believe 699 usd um but i always discount that down for anyone that mentions your name so if they mentioned your name or the or the name of the podcast yeah just drop me an email libby at and i'll take that down to 600 quite happily so that people can just 
get on board and and just try it and that comes from with an hour with me one to one where we deep mm -hmm. dive into what's making you tick where are your challenges what stresses you out and how to work in flow so that you can mm -hmm. elevate yourself and get to this next layer and also understand how to communicate with the people who are not like you exactly you. exactly okay wonderful and that's um in euro or us that's usd usd okay okay yeah. Yeah, I went USD when I started getting more and more international. And uh, so it's not my currency either. So I struggle with the conversion rates. Right, so right. I, get, I get my team to do that bit. And it's all it's all on the website for anyone. I know, I that. know. But it is it is the most universal. So we might as well. Yes. Yeah. Might as well just comply. Suck it up. Yeah, suck yeah. it up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks so much. And uh, yeah, so I'm sure we're you and I are going to be in touch. And for the rest of and like anything else, last minute thing you want to say, or do you think we got things covered? I'm going to link all your stuff. Oh, in, I can in... always say one more thing, Luella. Don't, don't tempt me. But I, mean, <laughs> I would just say to anybody, the name of this podcast is actually everything that you need. Mm -hmm. The name of this is actually the secret source of all the questions that you might have. I think I can is an affirmative statement that takes you into that virtuous circle where you think you can, so you take action, mm. then you're gonna get feedback, then you course correct, and then you get evidence. And we all just need that evidence. Yes. Faith is belief without proof. You've got to start with the faith that you can yes. before you get the proof, otherwise you're never gonna get that proof. Right. But starting with that in mind and starting by saying to yourself, this is going to work. You'll yes. figure out the how. Everything else becomes easy. Yeah. What what a great way of ending. You know, that's so perfect. What a great message. Okay. Have a great rest of, well, have a great weekend. It's Friday. And um, <laughs> yeah. And for the rest of my audience, have a great week. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks once again for joining me on another great episode of I Think I Can podcast. If you liked it, please subscribe below so you don't miss out on any future episodes. And until next week, treat each day like it was your last because each new day is a privilege that we shan't take for granted. Cheers and have a great week. Bye-bye.